All right, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about program design. I'm gonna take you through my process from start to finish. I'm also gonna clarify what I mean when I say traditional periodization is absolutely bullshit. It also just unnecessarily complicates things. Uh, in between that, I'm gonna be going through a workout. I got some squats to do today, as well as some upper body training. But before I get into that, I'm just gonna do a little bit of core work in my warm up because my back's feeling a little bit stiff today. But yeah, if I had to sum up my whole philosophy around program design, it'd basically just be getting someone a good week of training and just repeating that again and again and again, and just making very small adjustments as we go week by week. But I don't really employ any semblance of a phasic structure. Any of my clients who've been training with me for over a year by now who are watching this video will know that I just like to repeat that same micro cycle again and again and again and just own in on the perfect week of training. We don't change blocks every six to eight weeks or anything like that. We literally just try to come up with the perfect week of training that has a thread of every single quality and just try to make improvements over time. If you want the complete breakdown of my entire training system, I recommend you check out the links down below. You can get access to my course, GPP Level 1, which is phenomenal value. There's pre-recorded content as well as a community that you get access access to and weekly video calls and things like that. Or if you're not ready for that yet, maybe you can check out some of my free programs down below. We've got free plyo programs, some accessory bundles and things like that. Really good value down there. All right, so I'm gonna get stuck in some light side bends and some cable wood chops to loosen this back up. And then I'll get into my front squats and we'll start to break down this program design process. Alright, so one of the biggest things that underpins this perfect week of training is we make sure that we maintain a thread of all relevant qualities year round. So in every single week of training, there'll be an element of strength and hypertrophy training, speed and power or plyometric training, a little bit of endurance training, then mobility or whatever other qualities that you want to work on. But yeah, if it's an important quality that we want to bring up, it just stays in the program year round. We just don't have that issue because all relevant qualities are just being trained every single week. A lot of you are probably already asking yourselves, how do you fit every single quality into the one week of training? And if you're asking yourself this, then you're probably not clear on what the minimum minimum effective doses for each of these qualities. And I think a big reason for this is a lot of coaches really struggle applying a minimum effective dose successfully because they just don't actually know what quality training looks like. So if you maintain high quality and intent with your training, you actually don't need that much volume to bring up a quality. And then all of a sudden, you've got all this extra space in the program for training other qualities. You don't need your program entirely dedicated to strength and hypertrophy just to get bigger and stronger. You don't need a whole program dedicated to speed just to get a little bit quicker. You don't need your entire weekly programming dedicated to endurance just to get a little bit fitter. There's also no need to really worry about any of these qualities interfering with each other because at the end of the day, the interference effect isn't really a thing. It's more just an overtraining thing. Most of these qualities are complementary in nature. What you're seeing when people include too many qualities simultaneously and don't get any results, they're likely just overtraining and not managing their dose correctly. So when you're frugal about your dose of training and you focus on quality and you start to notice the complementary nature of training all of these qualities, your speed and power assist with your strength work. Your endurance training assists with your ability to recover in between sets. A really, it's an amazing thing. Another way I sort of look at the complementary nature of training multiple qualities within the same micro cycle, well, sorry, more specifically within the same session. So I really like all my athletes getting at least three exposures of plyometrics in each week and 10 to 15 minutes of plyometric work is one of the best warm ups you can do to potentiate your lower body strength work. So it just fits in really well, Tra not only training multiple qualities within the same micro cycle, but especially working on multiple qualities within the same session. And it, like I said, it can be done in a way that's genuinely productive and complementary. There's no interference whatsoever. Like if you get that gassed out by 10 to 15 minutes worth of plyometric work that it robs of your ability to perform decent strength work, then you should be doing some cardio anyway because your recovery and your work capacity absolutely stinks. All right, so as far as the squats, I'm gonna do six sets of doubles and uh, I want them to move pretty quick. So hopefully we can go up to like, I don't know, something like 120 for six sets of two would be really, really nice. Who knows, might even go up a touch heavier, but we want it to move really, really easy today.
Uh, so that's a really classic session structure for me that allows me to fit multiple qualities into the one workout in a really effective way. For example, starting out with some plyometric training, maybe even throw a little bit of light core work in there. If you're feeling stiff and you need to loosen up, then we get into our strength piece and then finish off with some accessories or some hypertrophy work. And then we even have space at the end where you can do a little bit of cardio. And none of those qualities are gonna interfere with each other. It's actually relaxing to cap off your workout. You know, you throw in your headphones, you hop on the assault bike and just crank out some nice relaxed zone two. Fits in so well. A big part of my program philosophy is that your program is meant to be a reflection of your client or your athlete's needs. And this idea that we need to drastically pivot a program every six to eight weeks and change phases, it never makes sense to me from that standpoint. Like our client's needs don't pivot on a dime every six to eight weeks. Your client's needs are a very slowly, gradually evolving thing. And so with this weekly structure that we just rinse and repeat and slowly adjust over time, we have a program structure that's actually representative of the rate of change in our client's needs over time. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm happy to wipe the slate clean if our client's needs do actually change on a dime. And there's some very good examples of this. Like if your client's lifestyle changes, say they get a new job and the amount of days they can train per week or the days that they can make it into the gym are affected. Maybe you have an athlete going from in season into an off season phase. So there's all of a sudden way more room in the program for all this extra S&C work. Or maybe your client's just bored out of their mind and just wants some change for the sake of it. These are all completely valid reasons reasons to reset your program and to create a new block of training. But yeah, it just breaks my heart to see coaches grinding to create these perfect weeks of training for their client, only to have to throw it out every six to eight weeks. And I think it just leads to coaches writing shitter programs because they're just trying to come up with something new all the time. Like when your program's working, that's such an amazing thing. And especially with these micro adjustments that we make on a week to week basis, we can keep this one program producing results for, uh, I think I've had a client on the same microstructure for about like 80 odd weeks at this point and it's still hitting PB, so why would I change it? <sighs> Repeating the same week of training again and again and again also makes it so easy to track your client's progress and troubleshoot your program rather than, you know, when you're changing blocks every six to eight weeks. It's like, well, why isn't the program working? I don't know, we just changed 50 things at once versus with this golden microcycle approach to training where you can just continually try to hone in on the perfect week of training. You know, once you've got it working, it's probably gonna keep working. And we're only making these tiny little changes here and there, so, so it makes it really easy to track the performance and troubleshoot things when things have gone a little bit wrong. So a big part of what allows me to do this is as well, like things like RPE-based strength training. So just prescribing my client, uh, for example, three sets of five on squats and an RPE seven or an eight. Once they've done that for four to six or God knows how many weeks in a row, we're gonna to start to see a trend in performance. And then once they're beginning to stall out with that prescription, then we'll just adjust things. Maybe I'll, if they have space to train a little bit harder, I'll bump up the intensity by an RPE point and that's gonna allow us a little bit more progression. Or if we've been crushing sets of five for a while and again, we've stalled out, maybe I'll let them go up to sets of six. Maybe I'll let them try some sets of four. And just like that, they're making great progress again. <sighs> It's also fine to rotate exercises, but I'll just like to keep things in the same slots, especially if we've found a structure that works for the athlete. So for example, if that prescription has been three sets of five at an RP seven to eight on back squats, maybe they're getting a little bit bored and checked out. We can change that for a machine squat. We can change that for a front squat. We do the same thing with accessory lifts and with different plyometric variations as well. We just expose them to it for a couple of weeks, but we rotate the exercise, but we keep the structure and we keep that slot the exact same. Just makes things super easy to manage and we know what's working. And if things stop working, it's so easy to sort of walk back through the program and know exactly what we changed and where we might have gone wrong. I brought this up a few times, but I'm an absolute slut for RP. And that doesn't just end at the strength and hypertrophy side of things. So I don't really use heart rate zones or anything like that for my endurance training. All of that's RPE or feel based. Even when it comes to my plyometrics, I prescribe all that using RPE. Which, like, don't get me wrong, I do run into problems with that. Mostly when I'm training people with zero self-awareness. But if you're working with people with any level of training experience and decent self-awareness, then they'll thrive with an RPE based training prescription in my opinion.
And at the end of the day, I'm just not interested in training people that lack self-awareness. So that's sort of like a little litmus test for me. If someone doesn't work well with RPE, there's plenty of other coaches they can go and train with. If you're just starting out as a coach, you might want to be a little bit more flexible than that. But yeah, I don't need more clients or anything like that. So I have a little bit more my way of doing things these days. And because I put out so much content, a lot of people who apply for my coaching, they're already sort of bought into my training ideas. I, I'm not meeting random people on the gym floor and trying to win them over. But again, RPE-based training, it's not that hard. It works from beginners all the way through to advanced. The main factor is self-awareness, not whether you're experienced or beginner at training. <sighs> Really loving these cable presses at the moment. It's a nice break as well from like just being really extended how I do my bench press. These I like to stay nice and stacked and get a lot of that scapular freedom. Mainly I guess focusing on just protracting at the end of each rep. Well, not just at the end of the rep, throughout the rep. All right, so throughout the year, if you want to emphasize different qualities, we can sort of do that again. We don't need to change the whole program. All you have to do is de-emphasize one or a couple of the qualities by removing a few sets, and then you just donate them to the quality that you want to emphasize. And like, this doesn't have to be that drastic. You know, just removing one or two units of cardio, couple of sets of plyometrics and then donating them to strength if you want to emphasize strength or just subtracting a couple of sets of strength work and then all of a sudden you have all this extra program space and recovery space freed up for more endurance training or like I said, whatever quality you want to emphasize. And if the idea of programming for multiple qualities simultaneously makes you a little bit uneasy, you don't want to ruin your client's progress, all you have to do is keep the main thing the main thing. So if you're working with a strength athlete, make sure that you program the strength stuff first and then everything else fits in around that. If someone's primary goal is endurance, then you program the endurance side of things, and then the strength, the plyos, and everything else, that fits around that. And you really can't go wrong with that approach. Just keep the main thing the main thing. Everything else, just run a thread of those qualities around it. You'd be surprised that even some of these qualities that you're just running a tiny little thread of, you can make great gains because you've got year-long exposure to that quality. All right, so in summary, all you need is the perfect week of training. And you're not gonna get the perfect week of training right off the bat, but you should be able to get pretty close if you interview your client, you understand their preferences and their goals. You put a thread of every single relevant quality in the program, and then you just tinker around with the dose, you tinker around with the schedule, changing little aspects, one thing at a time, until you've just got the perfect week of training. And like I said, the perfect week of training is a moving target, but it doesn't move that fast. So just small weekly changes are gonna help us stay on track with that. Auto-regulation is your friend, especially if your clients are self-aware. It's gonna help so much with the training outcomes. And if you want more guidance with this type of programming, sign up for GPP Level 1 and I will hold your hand through the entire process. We've got pre-recorded content on all of this stuff that goes into great detail. And then there's the Discord and there's the weekly video calls as well, where I can help you troubleshoot this process. You can show me the type of programs that you're writing for your clients. I'll show you the programs that I run my clients through. But I promise you, it's really not that hard. Program design is much simpler than it's made out to be. People just make it unnecessarily complicated because they have incorrect beliefs about the interference effect or, or just unnecessarily having to pivot their whole program every six to eight weeks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in a couple of days with another one. Ugh. <sighs>